key event leading to an approval by the tribe is a visit to Stone Observatory right here for the first look at the moon by the scientists. It established that what they called us, men with the long eyes, really needed the excellence of Bering Mountain for the National Optical Astronomy Observatory. So the lease signing at the schoolhouse for the Chapter Pit region soon completed everything, and engineering for the construction program shifted into idea. I mean, you see Harold and me in the background there, watching the important papers being signed there. I spent many Sundays sitting there, not saying a word while the tribal council meeting met. They asked me to be there in case there was a question. I never spoke up. <laughs> I let them have the initiative. And they would ask some questions. After being up there for the first time, I was sitting in my home in Scottsdale with a big piece of paper and some charcoal and wondered what I would draw. And I thought I would draw my impression of the view of Hickby from cells. This building right down at the corner here was where we had one of our first encounters with wonderful Mexican cuisine cooked by the proper people. And there's the trade in the trading house and other things, and there's the little stadium. And the, at that time, the headquarters was way off to the right. So that's what it looked like. There's that a kid we walked there. But one thing that we were asked was would the observatory be visible to them? I said, no, we're just going to make a road up there. Well, I think a lot of you know what that road turned out to be. It went through a part of the mountain that every time you would cut down on it, more would come down. You clean it off, more would come down. And it's the biggest scar you can imagine from there. It embarrassed me that they never raised that issue. Thank goodness. So that's a little bit of the adventure of the big and why it is there. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. But then I did look across the street, and the most incredible thing was happening to me at that point. Part of it was I got involved in what was a secret life, because I couldn't talk about it to anybody except President Harper, and he approved my doing it. And that was to get involved with overhead imaging, bigger and bigger things, up to as big as the Hubble telescope, which happened to be a copy of what we already had up there, but with a different form. <laughs> so that was part of my secret life, and uh, ox cart was another one at lots of times. So my life has been one series of adventures after another. And somebody said, well, why don't you write it up? Well, it's hard to write it up when I've started it, but not on technical things. I thought that people are interested in the people involved, not the details of it at all, but the interaction with real people and doing things, and there are a lot of good stories. So I'm enjoying writing it. I'm just sorry that Marjorie died a little over three years ago, but I'm Eric Mark. So that's the end of my presentation.
So we'll take questions at the end. It is now my pleasure and honor to introduce our second speaker for tonight, Bernard Sicharos, <laughs> along with his family, his wife Regina and daughter Megan, and I think the grandchild here too. Um, Bernard is the curator of education at the Thaw Foundation's Cultural Center and Museum. Thank you. 
So I want to start, I have to write some notes because once I get talking, man, I can talk all night long. <laughs> we need to get out of here at a reasonable time. So <laughs> we want to just really, I think the pictures and the song pretty much did what we wanted to do. We wanted to make that connection with this mountain that we call uh, Wild Viewer or Yanov Kamplak because it's a very important and special place to us all. Those of that, that claim uh, to be to be the descendants of those people that were created by Eve, God. Uh, we as all, like all people, have an explanation for our origins, our, our beginnings, and we have a creation story. And in our creation story, our Creator is the individual we refer to as our elder brother or our teacher. <coughs> His name is Eve, God. And the reason why. Baba Kriya range is so important is because the Creator resides in those mountains. There's an actual place in those mountains we call Ithoi Ki, which in our language means the home of Ithoi, Ithoi's house. And it's a very special place where traditionally only spiritual leaders were allowed to go to leave offerings and sing, sing, sing songs of prayer to the Creator. Thanking him for all the things that he had provided for us. When Ethan created our ancestors, he taught them all the things that they really, to, really needed to know to live harmoniously in the land that they were created. He taught them about the need for respect, respect for all things. All things were created for a purpose. And that we had access to these things, but we had to be respectful to them. Plants, the animals, all the things that were around us. He taught us about sharing, the sharing with one another, the labor, the, the products of our labor, all those things were very important. He taught us about uh, working on our well being, our emotional, psychological, and physical well being, which was very important in order to, to have the heart to harmony in the life that we were, we were given. And so, because Ethoi resides in these mountains, it's a very, very special place. Um, <coughs> there were many, many stories about these mountains, and I want to share just a, just a few of them with you. Um, we have veterans in our, in, our, in our membership that have served in, in, in world wars, served alongside the uh, other people and have gone out in the world and have seen many things, many things sometimes that are that that are maybe um, confusing to them. It confuses their connection to their culture or their their, their way of life. And so we've heard that elder or veterans sometimes when they return home from their experiences throughout the world. When they come home, they spend time on the at Baba Kiri, the mountains, uh, just reconnecting themselves to who they are as an author. So in that way, it's a very special place. There's a story about a hunter who <coughs> came across a fresh set of deer tracks, and he followed these tracks into the mountains. And he was very determined to find this animal so that he could provide food for his family. And he walked and walked and walked and just realized he had walked too far in and had run out of water and became very thirsty. And so on his way back to where he had, he had tied his horse, he realized that he couldn't make it because of the thirst that had come upon him. So he sat down under a tree in a, in a, in a ravine and lo and behold, another hunter came on horseback and met him and asked him what he was doing. And he explained to him, I, I tracked an animal in, but I couldn't find him. And now I'm so thirsty, I can't make it back to my horse. And the other, the other writer says, <clears throat> have you by any chance seen any drawings on the rocks in this area? And the man had just passed an area where he saw petroglyphs in the rock. And so the gentleman told him, up on that hill, there's some rocks like that. And so the other gentleman walked up 
and, 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 and viewed these petroglyphs and they came back down and walked up the washerways and found a place and dug a little hole and started digging and didn't dig very deep and waited and water began to seep into that hole and I think called his friend he came and he drank and he says how did you know about this? He says, it's right up there on those rocks. An <laughs> exclamation. What you do is right there. <laughs> so the bot, this again, this is a very important button to us. Um, there's another story. Oh. It serves as a very important landmark for many of us who leave our homeland for any period of time. Uh, when we see this upon our return, we have this sense of being home. Uh, many years ago, my wife and I traveled to San Francisco to uh, speak at, um, at the Temple of Music and Arts in San Francisco to a group of Native people and non-Native people at the annual film festival. We had just completed a 30-minute docudrama on the successes of our high school uh, from moving from being one of the worst schools in the state to being a school that, that uh, achieved recognition by the then President Ronald Reagan for school improvement. And so we wanted to share this, this achievement with anyone who was interested in hearing about it. And so we put together this docudrama and it was invited to screen at the, at the uh, Native American Film Festival. So we went. And in this film, right at the beginning, there's this beautiful view of the Wild Gilbert Range or the Baba Kibri Range with Pit Peak and, and uh, Baba Kibri. <laughs> and so we were in this auditorium with a thousand people. And uh, so we were asked to come up on stage and there were these big lights shining on us. And I thought it'd be really neat to say something in awe of them as an introduction, right? So we get up there and I start to talk and I, and I lose my train of thought and I have no idea what I said. <laughs> but I figured, well, they probably wouldn't understand me. <laughs> 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 well, we did our introduction, showed the movie, then we had intermission. And all of these hogs <laughs> came over. But they didn't say anything about it. Not understanding what I said. <laughs> they were very impressed with the view of the mountains. Because when they saw these mountains, they felt like they were home. So these mountains are our home. They're a very, very, very special place. Here I come to Excuse me. Here I come to um, It's very special in that they say that Here I come to serves as the garden for Ita, the garden area. And you find many, many different plants there. Plants that our ancestors used for medicines, for foods, for building materials. So it certainly is a lush garden. And in that way, it's very important to us. And so we ask ourselves this question. If this mountain was that important to us, why would we allow development on that mountain? Because there were many people that felt like that old man from Bangla, leave the mountain alone. It's very special to us. And so when you went to the tribal council, or you went to the Stukla council, um, I'm sure when you, when you presented your ideas for looking at the skies, that's the name, Long Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It was very important, I think, to our to our grandfathers at that time, because again, we're a sharing people. This is what we were taught, and if we had the opportunity to share something that was important to you, uh, that would be considered. But also because from the time I can remember, education has always been very important to the author. You know, to promote education among our young people. And I think our grandfathers then saw the opportunity to do this type of project to promote education for our young people. Jobs was also very important. And that this type of project may provide jobs for our people. So all of these factors being considered, 
<laughs> what Albert said that uh, that it was important that we agree to allow this partner to be developed in good faith, meaning we want you to understand that this market is very important to us. Uh, but what you're doing also is important. And they go together. And so then in good faith, we feel that you can build out of respect, that you can develop this button to learn, but also to understand that it is an area that demands our respect. I want to thank you so much because our, our grandfathers are looking down now, and I think they're smiling because of the respect that you have shown for that mountain and the knowledge that it's providing for all people. So with that, I want to invite Ron to come down, if you would, for a closing song. And then we'll answer any questions you may have after. Yeah? <laughs>
why don't we just spend five minutes on questions and then we'll stop and go to the reception. So if you have a question, raise your hand, speak loudly, and tell us who it's for. Okay. For Dr. Marnell, um, I'm curious as to the role that administrators play in all of this occurring. Be it uh, Dr. Harville or just uh, others. <laughs> well, for me, Dr. Harville played a big, a big role when I told him I wanted to come across the street. And he liked that. He shook his finger at me and said, I don't want to. Any of your budget and staff thinking you're doing the state a favor. I'll come and ask you for more money. Well, yes, administrators all along the line are very important. We have quite a few here. One of the most interesting ones was when we started building out the science centers. Harville handed me uh, expenditures for a month, and I would take it to a certain place, bring back a check. And the controller of the university said, I have to know exactly where that came from. And Harville said, it's possible. <laughs> so the administrators have helped a lot along the line that I have. And the sciences would have been built without this indirect <laughs> Another question. Yeah, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Garrett, uh, are any of the leaders that made the original decision to allow the observatory to still around the school to develop to You know, are they, any of the leaders still around? They were, they, they were there. I don't, I don't think so. I think they're all. I think they're all gone. Yeah. I did meet the daughter of one of our guys who was working with you. Oh, okay. So yes, yeah. there have been jobs in which he said, "I remember you." <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Do you know the daughter of the, the gentleman that was in that picture on the bonfire? Uh, his uh, or her husband lives in Queenswell, which is in that district. And so, uh, in fact, they gave us a copy of that picture and we restored it and gave them back a restored copy. So, so we had those photographs. <coughs> but no, a lot of those people, I have to tell you that my own personal experience with the, the road that was going out, I was probably nine years old, I think, in 59 or Eight, maybe fifty-eight, and uh, I come from a hunting family, and uh, we were out in the in the in the Kipping Wilds with my dad and my uncles, and, and we camped out the night before to go hunting the next day, and so uh, I went out with one of I was too young to carry a, a, a rifle, but I tagged along with one of my uncles who went up to the first big rock and sat down and went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there watching. All of a sudden, I see this gentleman in uh, orange vests up on the side of the mountain. So I wake my uncle and I say, look, there's, a, there's some guys up there. I asked him, what are they doing? He says, let's go find out. So we walked up there and um, he talked to them. They said, oh, we're surveying for a road. And I, and my young mind couldn't, couldn't comprehend a road on that mountain because it was so steep and rocky. But they were at, but it actually happened. And so there's that road up there that we, we got from when we looked at it. So yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a story behind the, the choice of the name Kip Peak? I, I can try to answer that. We, 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 we've tried to research that and we've heard three different stories. It, uh, it, it didn't get locked into the US Geological Survey until the early 1900s. And the surveyor uh, some people say it was named after the surveyor's sister who was in England and never ever came to the U.S. Uh, some, some people say it was named after the person that was helping him carry his gear. 
Uh, we don't know for sure. <laughs> but I know the name is Bjorn from Glock. <laughs> astronomer said you will never get a good picture from space because when you pull the dark slide out it'll shake the whole galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do it. <laughs> so how did you pull it off? <laughs> well I left and the space division disappeared. <laughs> I need somebody to keep <laughs> Did it go to Area 51? I had extended my three years. <laughs> <laughs> um, two more questions. Uh, young woman down. Um, do you personally know how to read my list? Do I personally know how to read my list? Yeah. No, I don't have that skill. I'm afraid. Some people do, but I, I certainly don't. So. That was, I, I guess I can always learn. <laughs> 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 the woman right there. Uh, the spirit of getting things done. Do you have any advice for the rest of us? We're learning now, and we'd also like our peers to get many good things done. She was asking, in the spirit of getting things done, do you have any advice for young people that want to emulate you in getting things done? What advice would you like to give her? Well, if you don't mind the older people getting mad at you, Let's thank both of our excellent speakers and for the next family again. And if I may, why not? It's cleared up. So we're opening up the observatory. <laughs> and now I know this isn't the telescope that the Odin elders built through over 50 years ago, but it's the same building. It's the same building. And you can look at the moon tonight, just right. like they did. All right. It's a reception. Thank you.